Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you why Java is not going to go anywhere for the foreseeable future. Let me demonstrate. So I went to the site and uh, I wanted to show you a simple example of some Java here. So this is a simple example of how to send an email in Java. So if we copy and paste this, let's open up Sublime. So we have 73 lines of code there. So that's one example. So we go down a little bit more. We want to see an example of how to send an HTML email with Java servlets. Here we go here. So that's about the same amount of code. So uh, let's compare that to PHP right here. So a lot less code. If we go to this example here on Medium, an article, and sending email using JSP, Servlets, Java Mail, and Ajax. So let me show you how to configure everything. Here's your JSP page. Here's the form. Here's the servlet code for sending the email, all here, of course. Uh, yeah, so a lot of code. You got our nice try catch here. Java, by the way, is a great language. It has unbelievable uh, runtime capabilities. Here's your configuration XML file. Good times, everybody. Uh, so you see, uh, it's a bit of code to write there. Again, PHP. Now, of course, PHP doesn't have the error trapping here. You could implement it, but this is a very simple example of just using a PHP mail function, which is built into PHP. I'm just using PHP as an example. It's just simple. So what you got to take away from this is that you see how much more code you got to write in Java? That alone will guarantee Java jobs for, pff, at least in our careers. Why? Because there's just so much more code to write. Don't get me wrong. I love Java. Of all the languages I've written code in, and I've written commercial code in eight or nine languages, I've lost count over the years. I've written more lines of Java code easily, by far, than any other language. And actually, I've written more lines of Java code than many languages combined. Now, I wrote Java for several years. That being said, one of the other reasons why I've written more Java code than just about any other language, because it takes a lot of code to get anything done in Java. Now, the advantage of having all that Java code to write, the advantage of Java's verbosity is that everything is very explicit and obvious and well laid out. So if we go back to the code example, let's go sending servlets here. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit on this so it's a little bit clearer. So if you look at this Java code, we know exactly what's going on. Strongly typed, so we know all our data types. Everything is very clear. We have good security and dependability built into Java as a matter of protocol, if you will. So you know, generous use of try catch which uh, makes sure if any errors should occur, we're able to catch them and do something accordingly. Of course, this is very simple code. When we're catching the exception, we're not really doing much except letting the developer know that we had an error. So uh, yes, Java is very verbose. It takes a lot of Java code to get anything done. And because coders are going to have to, well, Java developers rather, are going to have to sit there and write tons and tons of code, they're guaranteed to have a job for years. All joking aside, uh, Java is dependable. There is a lot of jobs out there in Java because there's just so much legacy Java code. When I first started writing Java in the mid 90s, just when it was came about in 95, I think 95, 96, I started writing Java code. The great thing about Java was it was actually the light nimble language at the time, by the way. But one of the great things about Java that carried it through the years that it was very, very dependable. So Java is verbose. It takes a lot of lines of Java to get anything done, but that code runs very well, very dependable, very flexible in the sense that you had uh, that, that dependability in the Java language. It was very broad. So we're, with other uh, stacks, other platforms, I found early iterations of .NET and I had limited experience with it, but I did some do some stuff. I found that .NET and Microsoft technologies work very well if you stayed within their parameters. If you tried to go outside of those parameters, boom, it would became exceptionally difficult. Whereas with Java, I found it was more dependable. Now, that was years ago, and I'm 
sure, .NET has been more refined over the time. But nonetheless, Java is extremely dependable. It has a huge install base. So that means there's tons and tons of work out there. If you're looking at Java as a potential career choice, as your primary source of income, let me help you to understand what that means in practicality. If you're writing Java, typically you're going to be working for very large organizations, big companies. So understand what that means. Bureaucracy, working with big groups, working on projects that may last a year, two years, three years, big enterprise things. If that appeals to you, then Java is, might be a very good choice for you in terms of career. On the other hand, if you prefer to be working on smaller, more nimbler projects, maybe working for small, medium-sized businesses, then Java might not be the best choice for you. I think maybe the exception is you could still see a lot of Java being used for uh, mobile development, Android. But keep in mind, Google has said officially they recommend Kotlin over Java for Android development for a whole bunch of reasons. Kotlin, if you don't know, is, uh, is a language that was put out by JetBrains, who are famous for making great integrated development environments. I've used their products in the past. Fantastic. First one I ever used was IntelliJ. They've done things for PHP, PHP Storm, PyCharm. Anyhow, so JetBrains put out a lighter, nimbler language, Kotlin, that interfaces very well with Java. Google officially announced that you should use Kotlin as a primary language for Android development uh, because I think there's some legal issues with that. You know, I think uh, if I recall Google and Oracle, who owns Java now, were having some disputes. I'm sure that played into it. But the fact of the matter is Kotlin is extremely lightweight, nimble language. It's much more productive in terms of coding time than, uh, than Java. Kotlin is to Java as Swift, Apple Swift's language is to Objective-C. If you don't know, Objective-C was used to write iOS apps for many years, and then Apple saw that they needed to create a more light, lightweight, nimble language, and so they came out with Swift. Anyhow, Java is here to stay. Don't worry. If you're looking at Java, you like Java, I can say that you're almost guaranteed to have work for the next two decades or so, if not longer. And uh, this is an easy prediction to make because A, Java is still always in the top three most popular languages used out there. You have massive corporations that have huge investment in Java technology, so they're not going to jettison that for no reason. Think about it. They're still using a lot of COBOL. And they're still using a lot of mainframe stuff. Uh, so there's no way that they're going to jettison a, a far more a modern language uh, today just because somebody comes out with something, uh, some lightweight uh, language like a TypeScript or something. Anyhow, there you go. If you know my channel, you know that I'm pretty much language agnostic, meaning I think all languages have their merits. It just, it just depends on the type of work that you want to do and the type of business you want to work for. Personally, today, I would not start any new projects in Java simply because it is too uh, verbose, uh, too much configuration, and uh, too slow to develop with. For me, if you wanted to do any new projects, I would be using uh, lightweight languages like JavaScript, PHP, Python. Not because they're overall better, it's just that you get a lot more uh, bang for your buck in terms of coding hours with those other languages. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Comment below. All right. I'm Steph.